Good morning and welcome to our praise worship service this morning at Cambus Nathan North. Everyone is welcome, whether you are here in person for the first time, the hundredth time, or you've been here all your days, whether you are watching online or catching up with us later on. A reminder that tea and coffee is served after the service and you are all welcome. There's even a wee biscuit, so help yourself. A couple of intimations this morning. So, we're a plea for some help this morning. So, as you know, in Children's Church, we have a fantastic mural on the back wall. Well, we're ready to start painting the new mural, which is the New Testament parables, and it's going on the side wall. So, we're looking for volunteers to help paint it. And it would be good if as many people as possible are able to help make it a real community effort. We're looking for people of all ages and all abilities. If you think you can be involved even for an hour or two over the next few weeks, then speak to Ronnie or Laura Brown after the service or contact either of them through the week or indeed myself and I can pass the details on. So if you can hold a paintbrush, that's the only talent that you need, right? Because it's already been drawn. No, do they need more talent than that? Oh, you've got to be able to drink. Co- what about tea? Can we drink tea? Is that okay? Right, that's fine. We can drink tea, coffee, and hold a paintbrush. Sorted. <coughs> and just the other intimation is just to remind you all that tomorrow we are holding a service of thanksgiving for the life of Jim Miller here in the church at two o'clock, followed by a committal service in Cambus Nathan Cemetery at three, to which you are all very welcome. I know that you are all holding the family in your prayers. Our call to worship. Creating God, we gather in your name to worship you. We give thanks that there is a small spark of God within us. Kindle that small spark into a flame of love and service. Sustaining God, we gather in your name to worship you. We celebrate the loving presence of God in our life. May God's loving presence be a strong influence in our life. Nurturing God, we gather in your name to worship you. We rejoice that God teaches us about love and forgiveness. As we grow in faith, trust and love for God, may our worship, witness and service bring honour to God's holy name. Amen. If you are able, will you please stand as we sing together our opening hymn of worship, hymn 132, Immortal, Invisible, God, Only Wise.
Let us still our hearts and minds and come before the Lord in prayer. All-knowing God, we gather together with praise and thanksgiving for who you are and for all that you have done for us. <clears throat> you know us better than we know ourselves, all our thoughts and actions, and yet you still love us. No matter where we go or what we do, your love encircles us, ahead and behind, gently leading and guiding and blessing. We praise you for your love and your faithful presence in our lives. May your spirit move in our hearts and minds as we worship together. Examine our attitudes and actions. Lay bare the things we need to confess. Challenge us with your word and guide us on to paths that lead to life. For we are your people, called by your name. You love us from the moment of our conception. You know us and you love us in the womb. You love us and you call us from before the moment of our first breath. And you love us when we first see the light of day. As a mother and father love their child before they ever see it and then embraces it gently from the moment of its birth, so you love us. You love us, O oh God, from the time of our naming. You love us in our growing and hold us as we take our first steps. You love us and walk beside us as we explore the world with eager hands and eyes. As a mother and father love their child as they see it grow and develop, so you love us. You love us, O oh God, as we mature and seek our way. You love us as we become aware of the world around us. You love us as we smile and play. You even love us when we say no and begin to stray. As a mother and father love their child as they see it become proud and tall, so you love us even when we sin and fall. We thank you, God, for loving us when we are unloving, for caring for us when we are uncaring, and for calling us when we go far away. Hear our prayers as we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Who remembers the programme Mr and Mrs? Well, guess what? We're going to play it. I have some willing, well, I don't know about willing, but we have some volunteers. I don't know if they're volunteers either. We have some press ganged people who are going to help me this morning. So, Nori and Moira, who wants to go first? Who wants to answer first? <laughs> right, okay. So, let me think. Right, so, I'm going to ask a question. You're going to write down what you think Nori's answer will be. Okay? Right? Once you've written it, tell me, I'll then get Nori to shout out what his answer is, and we'll see if what you've written agrees. <laughs> and can I tell you, I haven't primed them, I haven't given them pre questions, so. Oh, let's hope this goes well. Right. Nori, what is Moira's favourite song? Wait, 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 she's not written it down yet. <laughs> it's a long one. <laughs> right. Bridge over troubled water. Bridge over troubled water. 
Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. What is Moira's? They're all favourites. Okay. Book. Book. <laughs> I think Moira wants to know our favourite book is. <laughs> Shout out a book. Wait, 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 Hang on, right, what are you thinking? I'm not thinking <laughs> <laughs> oh. This could be bad. Go on. Ryan's daughter. I don't know that one. Okay. Right. Favourite food slash meal. So if you were to go out for dinner, well, wait, she hasn't written it down yet. All <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, she's actually written down steak. Right, okay, right. Favorite holiday destination? Right. Cyprus. Pa I put Paphos, but yeah, Cyprus. Okay. If Moira was stranded on a desert island. <laughs> what item would she take? What item would you take with you? You're stranded on a desert island. What would you take? These. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, she's going to take herself. Sorry. <laughs> Pick, well, she's put you. So that was only after she heard you say it. <laughs> right. Okay. This is a yes or no, so you've got 50 per, you know, 50 chat. Would Moira put pineapple on a pizza? Yes. <laughs> You're supposed to wait till she right. Can I tell you, pineapple on a pizza, that's it, you and I fall on it. <clears throat> right, guess what, we're going to swap. Here we go. At least Moira knows the rules of this, that she doesn't shout out until... Right, again, same questions. Favourite song? Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, after giving her. Uh, he's not written yet, have you written it? Favourite song? I quite like that song, actually. That's quite a good song. <laughs> you written it? You know that? Right, what have you got? The rose. <gasps> Moira did actually say the rose. Okay, favourite book? <laughs> There's no cheating. <laughs> right, what do you think he said? What did you say? Oh, there we go. We're in the church, so we've got to say that. Right, favourite film? Well, we know what he thinks yours was. This is a long film. You written it? Mm -hmm. uh, Twelve Angry Men. Twelve Angry Men. Boys Town. Boys Town. I don't know that one. Oh, Boys Town. Oh, I don't know that one. Is that an old one? Ah, yeah, right. Okay. Favorite, favorite. Right, favourite food slash meal. Fillet steak? Fillet steak. steak. I quite like a steak. Favourite holiday destination? <laughs> Pathos. Cyprus. Cyprus. Okay. 
What desert item, desert island item would you take with you? He's running out of space. He's been more ecologically aware here and not ripping off pages. <laughs> That's fine. If I could have found my whiteboard, I would have brought the whiteboard, but I couldn't find the wee one this morning. Okay. Right, you done it? Okay. What do you think you would take? Respect. <laughs> <laughs> what would you take with you? Family pictures. Well, he would need his specs to be able to see them. <laughs> so maybe that counts. Okay. Pineapple on a pizza, yes or no? Oh, I thought it was you know. I'm sorry. Pineapple. Does not belong on a pizza? Huh? Ah, it goes with ice cream. Doesn't it go on a pizza? Although, can I tell you, I once worked with a boy who went to Jamaica and had kiwi fruit and peaches on a pizza. I mean, that's just a bit too much. Anyway, isn't it just as well that there is not one single person that knows us <laughs> inside and out, even when we have lived together for a long, long time? There's no one that knows every single thing about us. Sometimes I actually even wonder how well do we know ourselves? When asked the question, your favourite song, your favourite book, your favourite film, it can be quite tricky to know these things about you. But God knows us. God knows us inside and out. He knows what we say before we even say it. Even those words that we mutter under our breath when somebody is in a 60 doing less than 30. <laughs> yeah, we don't. He knows those words. He knows the ones that we even say in our heads. He knows the good and he knows the bad about us. But guess what? He still loves us. Despite all our flaws, all our failings, despite all our attempts to hide what we don't want anyone else to see about us, he sees it and he loves us. He made us, he knows us, he cares for us, and he will go on loving us no matter what we do. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for making us and caring for us. You understand us and you know us better than we can ever imagine. Help us to trust in you and give thanks for your presence. Thank you for your love. Amen. So our next song is going to be on the video. And it's called Our God is a Great Big God. I think some of you know it. There is actions to it. Feel free to join in the actions if you wish. They will also be on the video. But let us stand and raise the roof and sing Our God is a Great Big God. When it comes up. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. And he holds us in his hands.
morning are from the Psalms and from 1 Corinthians, and will be read this morning by Liz Watson and Kate Strachan. Lord, you have examined me and you know me. You know everything I do. From far away, you understand all my thoughts. You see me, whether I'm working or resting. You know all my actions. Even before I speak, you already know what I will say. You are all around me on every side. You protect me with your power. Your knowledge of me is too deep. It's beyond my understanding. Where could I go to escape from you? Where could I get away from your presence? If I went up to heaven, you would be there. If I lay down in the world of the dead, you would be there. If I flew away beyond the east or lived in the farthest place in the west, you would be there to lead me, you would be there to help me. Amen, and thanks be to God.
1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 to 7 and 13. Love is patient and kind. It is not jealous or conceited or proud. Love is not ill-mannered or selfish or irritable. Love does not keep a record of wrongs. Love is not happy with evil, but happy with truth. Love never gives up, and its faith, hope, and patience never fail. And at verse 13, meanwhile, these three remain faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Amen, and thanks be to God. Thank you to Kate, Liz and the choir. If you are able, will you please stand as we sing together hymn 532, Lord, you have come to the seashore.
God within and beyond us all. Teach us the silence of humility, the silence of wisdom, the silence of love, the silence of faith, the silence that enables reflection and speaks without words. Teach us, God, to silence our own hearts and minds, that we may listen for the movement of your spirit within us and treasure your presence in the depth of our beings. Amen. A man decided to write a book about churches around the United Kingdom. So he started in Plymouth and he headed north. Going to a large church, he began taking photographs and making notes. He noticed a golden telephone on the wall in the prayer room with a sign above it that read, 10,000 pounds per minute. Curious, he found the minister and questioned him about it. The minister told him it was a direct line to heaven. And if he pays the price, he can talk to God. The man thanked the minister and left. He moved on and visited churches in London, York and Cardiff, finding more phones with the same signs and the same answers from the minister. Finally, he arrived in Scotland and upon entering a church in Cambus Nathan, he saw the usual golden telephone. But this time, the sign above it read 35 pence per minute. Fascinated, he talked to the minister, telling her about all the other golden phones he had seen in other churches in other cities. About how he'd been told it was a direct line to heaven and how he could talk to God for £10,000 a minute. How could this be when you were only charging 35 pence per minute. The minister smiled and replied, ah, but yes, you're in Scotland now. It's a local call. <laughs> it's a funny story. But it does make you think, is God located right here in Scotland? And that's why it's long distance from anywhere else. I don't think so. I'm going to give you some theology lesson this morning. Aren't you excited? This is some of my uni learning, so here we go. God is omnipresent. It's a big word, and it's one of those words that theologians like to toss about, but it basically just means that God is present everywhere at the same time. Another way of saying it is that we are surrounded by God's presence. And that is what the psalmist is referring to when he asks the question in verse 7, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the shoal, you are there. God is everywhere. There is no place that you or I can go that God is not there and has not been there waiting for us to arrive. Remember Jonah. He tried to flee the presence of the Lord. God just says, Jonah, really? You can run, but you can't hide. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there, your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. Doesn't matter where you run or how fast you run to get there. If you go under the cover of darkness, how many twists and turns you make, like a cop chase when you see it in the crime dramas and they try and evade the police. Doesn't matter how you try and cover your tracks. Doesn't matter. God is always there with you. I love this little saying, we are never alone because I can take God with me and leave him there 
with you. Because God is everywhere and he is always with us. God is here with us today. He'll be with you in your car as you're driving home. Kind of makes you think of it, doesn't it? He'll be with you at your job. He'll be with you at the dinner table, on the golf course and on the bowling green, in the garden, at Morrison's or Asda, at the hairdressers or out in the hills. When you're happy, when you're sad, at all times and in all situations, God is everywhere and he is always with us. Right, here we go, another big theological word. Another word to describe God is omniessence. Do you like that one? Do you just know what it means? Well, I didn't either until I went to uni. It just means that God is all-knowing. So not only is God always with us all the time, he also knows everything about us all the time. We are an open book before God, and God is a thorough investigator. O oh Lord, you have searched me and you have known me. God knows everything, and there's nothing hidden from him. He knows everything we do. He knows everything we think. He knows everywhere we go, and he knows everything we say. And he knows all of it before we even know it ourselves. God knows the hairs of our heads. He knows our future, and he knows our past. There's a saying that goes along the lines that character is what you have when no one is watching. But just remember, God is always watching. He knows what you're doing, but he also knows why you're doing it. And I know that that makes some of us feel a little bit uncomfortable. Maybe the thought of God knowing all our deepest secrets makes us squirm just a little bit, or maybe makes us feel just a little bit hot under the collar. On the other hand, the fact that God knows all these things is really scary, but it's also very comforting. It's comforting to know that God knows us so well and we can rest easy in the fact that because and if God knows us this well, he will never forget us. Some of you may have heard of Babe Ruth. He was maybe one of the greatest American sports figures of all time. And he was not exactly noted as being a Sunday school teacher. An incident for which he received much publicity involved an 11-year-old boy by the name of Johnny Sylvester. The boy had been kicked in the head by a horse and doctors feared it might be fatal. Johnny told his father, Horace, who was a Manhattan banker, I wish I could see Babe Ruth wallop a home run before I die. Telegram was sent off to the New York Yankees in St. Louis, where they were playing the Cardinals in the 1926 World Series. Back came autographed balls from both the Yankees and the Cardinals, including one from Babe Ruth, where he had inscribed, I'll hit a home run for you on Wednesday's game. In fact, he hit three of them. The doctors called the effect on the boy's condition a miracle. Some months later, during spring training, an uncle of Johnny's approached Babe Ruth and thanked him profusely for sending the balls to Johnny and for hitting the home runs. Ruth politely asked, and how is Johnny? The uncle said Johnny was doing fine and then he left. Ruth turned to the reporters and asked, who the blankety blank is Johnny Sylvester? God knows us and God will never forget who we are. And isn't it reassuring to have someone in your life that really knows you? A wife, a husband, maybe not, a best friend. I'm fortunate. 
I have a mum and a daughter who know me really, really well. It's a tradition in our family that you get new jammies at Christmas. Emma and I know each other so well that we bought each other the exact same pair of pyjamas. They were blue and yellow, well, blue and grey striped Harry Potter pyjamas. And my mother said that when we wore them together, we looked like a pair of convicts. I have really good friends who know by my expression, because I have a very expressive face, how I'm feeling or what I'm thinking in meetings. And it's best not to sit the three of us anywhere together or anywhere we will have eye contact because we know each other very well. But the best thing about having someone who really knows you is the trends of tremendous freedom it brings. You can be yourself with them more than you can be yourself with anyone else. You can do things or say things that you would never say to anyone else because you know you'll be accepted. But they will also tell you if you're out of order or you're going down the wrong path. Because you see, a friend or loved one is someone who knows all about you and loves you just the same. They know you and accept you, but they love you enough to try and help you improve and become better at things because they love you. And that's the same type of love that God has for us. The wonderful hymn that we sang just a couple of weeks ago talks about that type of friendship. What a friend we have in Jesus has the lines Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. And in his arms he'll take and shield you. And you will find a solace there. God knows us warts and all. And he still loves us. And he'll still hold us. And he'll still protect us. God created us. He put us together in his image. He knows where all the parts are and why he put them where they put they are. The heart is in the right place to do its job. The liver, the kidneys, the pancreas, and everything in our bodies in the right place to do the jobs that they are designed to do. The brain sends the signals to the right place at the right time to make everything work together in harmony. He gave us our thought processes he created in us the ability to think, to love, and to learn. So it stands to reason that if God knows us this intimately, he can take care of us perfectly. God uses his knowledge of everything we do, think, and say, and everything we go to provide providential protection. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. We are surrounded by God's protection. All the way around, we are covered. One thing you might not know about me yet is I love American crime dramas, NCIS, Bones and SWAT. And in these programmes, whenever they're going after the baddie, there's usually, well, always, a shootout. In SWAT, Hondo, who's the main guy, he'll often ask his man to cover him as he runs in all guns blazing. And they'll then shoot furiously in order to protect him. In Bones, Booth, the FBI agent, will often tell his partner, Bones, I've got your back. Just another way of saying that he'll protect her. We've got your back. It just means that your wife, husband, partner, teammate, friends will stick up for you, back you up, support you and protect you. And as much as these people love you, God loves you even more. And because of that love, we are surrounded by God's protection. He's got our backs. And although we know this, it raises some questions. 
We know that God is all-knowing and ever-present. So why do we try and outrun and hide from him? We know that God can do all things. So why do we say that we can't? We know that God is the light. So why do we choose to walk in darkness? We know that God has forgiven us. So why can't we forgive ourselves? We know that God will protect us. So why do we still live in fear? God's love and protection are mentioned throughout the Bible. God had the Israelites' backs as they fled from Egypt. God had Gideon's back at the battle against the Midianites. God had Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's backs in the fiery furnace. God had Daniel's back in the lion's den. And so it stands to reason that he's got our backs too. The truth is, there's nothing that you can do to be loved by God any less than you are right now. You cannot outrun God's love. And likewise, there's nothing that you can do to be loved any more than you are right now. You cannot earn a greater dose of his love because you are fully loved by God at this and every moment. When you become a believer, a child of God, from then on, you are God's and God is yours. And there is nothing too great to separate us from God's love. Let us pray. God, you are amazing. When we consider the truths of today's scripture, we are amazed. We are amazed that you know us so well and are amazed that in that knowledge, you still love us, you still care for us, You still long to protect us, to watch out over us, and to help us honour you with our lives. And in that knowledge, you still love and protect us, and help us to love and protect each other. Amen. If you are able, will you please stand as we sing together hymn 97, O God, you search me and you know me.
Let us pray. Almighty God, who made us who we are, we offer all of ourselves to you. Take our talents, our energy, and our joy, and use us to share your love. Take our mistakes, our regrets, and our pain, and use us to bring your healing. Magnify the gifts we offer before you today to spread your peace in the world. O Lord, our God, as we sit in quietness, our thoughts are far from quiet. We are wrestling with doubts and fears. We are looking for answers. We are hoping against hope. We are seeking strength. We are hungry for warm sunshine, for healed bodies, for rest from tears. Your word says the hungry will be filled. And we ask today for you to fill us. Fill us with the breath of life. Fill us with thankful hearts. Fill us with calmness, courage, and most of all, with the knowledge of your presence. For those who are known and unknown to us, who are ill, we ask, O oh God, that you would surround them with your strong and healing presence. For those known and unknown to us, mourning the death of a loved one, we ask you to surround them with your strong, comforting presence. For those known and unknown to us, wrestling with difficult questions, we ask you to surround them with wisdom to find the answers. For those who are lonely, we ask you to surround them with your loving friendship. For those in despair, we ask you to surround them with your hope. Most of all, Lord our God, may we and they know your love, your great love you have for each one of us. You know the hairs in our heads and count each beat of our hearts. You knit us together when we were being formed. You know our getting up and our lying down. You are familiar with all our ways. You were there at their beginning and you will be with us through to the end. May we not lose sight of your constant care. We look to you, God, to be present in our communities and in our world. Continue to show us how we can be part of your work in the world. Teach us how we can grow into faith and become more like Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. If you are able, please stand as we sing our final hymn of worship, hymn 160, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven.
Know this. God knows you better than you know yourself. No matter where you go or what you do, God is already there, surrounding you with mercy and guiding you with love. So go with joy and confidence, knowing that God goes with you. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. I'm actually off on holiday next week. So church is off. I'm always open. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, next week, Elizabeth Waddle will be here to preach. Um, and I'm sure you'll make all very, very welcome while I am packing up boxes. So, enjoy.